are you? How are you doing, folks? It's Sunday night, and it's Audio Who once again for your listening delight. It's Sylvester McCoy. It's Christian Edwards, and it's Tracy Child back as Seven Quine and young Will Arrowsmith with the second story of this trilogy in Starlight Robbery. We have an intergalactic space trading frog back from the events of Black and White. We have a blue female who sounds like a chav with antennas. Uh, we have a very rowdy bunch known as the Saltarans who uh, like to play war games. And we have the mysterious cult shulk back again with his persuasion machine, but as the credits come rolling in, all is not as it seems. Before we get to that, let's get to this. It's who showed up this evening. Notice the absence from a tart from Tottenham. Um, joining us from Mass at Sue, how are we doing, sir? Groovy, thanks, man. Yeah, thank you, Mrs. Campbell. All the way from the funder, he is down under Monday morning. AJ, how goes it, man? Hi, guys, how are you? Good to see you, mate. All the way from Texas, taking a break from shoveling dog duty. It's Texas Timwell. How are we doing, Timbo? Hello. Good to see you, mate. And waiting to see if his giants can, you know, de debunk the cowboys. It's well for him, I see. How are we doing, well? You know, that don't happen to 8 p.m. my time. Mm. We'll see how it goes. So, guys, Starlight Robbery. Uh, interesting that... How do you pronounce this body name again? Garnet, or whatever the hell the frog hang was called, is back. Uh, intergalactic frog, Arthur Daly type esque. Give me all your money and I will sell you the goods. Um, he also showed up again in the, the recently released Jenny box set, so that's interesting. At this point, he did more, in, more outings in Frobisher. Go figure. Uh, where to begin with this tale, guys? Okay. AJ, can I get your open thoughts, mate, on Starlight Robbery? So, Vesta McCoy, Tracy Childs, and Christian Edwards. Um, as a story by itself, it's okay, but as, a, as part of the trilogy, it works better. Um, yeah. It's good to see the Sontarans are sort of back to being not completely amoral. They've got, you know, their um, rules of war, and they have a little bit of respect. Very Co small. Code of ethics. For, yeah. yeah that, you know, for other people and whatnot. Um it's good to hear the classics on Torrance back again. I mean, um, you know, from the eighties and so on. Um, Garen Doll is a bit of a twat. And, uh, so was, uh, <laughs> I think that was the point. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was, uh, Ziv a little bit towards it until the end, she changed her mind and she was a mayor head. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, and basically spoiler alert gets killed. So, um, yeah. Well, yeah. She was a boy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was a good story, but we'll get more into it. <laughs> All right, mate. Cheers. Well, home the first mate. Starlight robbery. Well, well he hearing the first two chapters, I wasn't very thrilled about it. I was very bored with it. Mm. But when chapter three to the end, it really picked up. I, 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 then I really liked it. It's a good, like AJ said, just listen to this story by yourself. It's a good story. I wish they would have added a little bit of this twist in the first half. Mm. But I got to get, like AJ said, that Santara stood out great in the story. I mean, this is the way they should be. Even though the voice is damn stalky like that, but you can tell it's the, it's the 80s. On yeah. cars and the way they, the way they, their combat maneuvers is real funny, but it's, is out there, and they, they, they don't, they don't believe it. They never heard of the word um, withdraw, retreat, or nothing like that. Suicide so they, is another one. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, there's another one I never heard either. Um, yeah, like I just said, uh, the little that little blue captain Zip, she stood out pretty good because I actually thought there was a potential story arc with her coming up because of, uh, like if you if you listen to it, you find out that. Her mother or aunt is in jail for something that she claimed it never happened. So I thought maybe that could be something future going on. But mm. like, like you just said, that's not going to happen because she got bumped off. That's mm. that was a shit. I was, I, was, I was a little bit upset about that. Um, um, the one, the one that, that was weird. I got maybe I was laughing. I had a pause a couple of times. I was laughing. Was that um, cracking mother who wanted to kill Evelyn? What? I mean, I mean, uh, um, you know. That this chick because uh, she was Klein, she, yeah, yeah, and Liz Klein because she thought she was a, she was pretending to be an alien species that she wiped out herself was like that. Was it croc mother or dragon mother? I, I, I was but they call her like, but she, remember they, they were like squids, so they call them kraken mother, like the yeah, kraken, kraken mother. It was, yeah. so, it was just, it was as fuck. She was amazing. She said that a wee bit like shadow weaver or a shira. You're like, what the hell, yeah. man? But there you go. 
interesting yeah, you gotta, stuff. You got to get props because um, Klein stood up pretty good in the story, and mm -hmm. of course Will Will Aerosmith um with Ziv, he stood up pretty good in that story. Like I said, this is only the middle of a three part trilogy, so I look forward to listening to the third part. No, okay, okay. <clears throat> Timbo, the first mate, style at robbery. Yeah, I agree with everybody so far. I think um, I, I get Will's point. I think it seems like it's a Dr. Light story for the first two episodes. He's yeah. kind of barely there, yep. which is why it might seem like it drags a bit. But they're really putting all their pieces into place for the for the other two episodes. And I think they did a pretty good job of that. Um, I thought that um, that it was interesting, too, that the Centaurans weren't actually the main baddie. I mean, as cool as they were, it, you really have this this really campy frog yeah. version. I mean, he's almost like an evil version of Mr. Toad running around and, <laughs> yep. and, and, and really just, you don't really take him seriously as a villain because he's so camp until the, the final episode when he shoots the girl, which was yeah. really unfortunate that you could kind of see it coming by that point. Oh, yeah. So yeah. It, it was a good story. I think, I think AJ's point that it works better as the middle of a trilogy than it's a story on its own right is, is a good point. Yep, I probably agree with that. So, what are the thoughts for you? Yeah, um, I really, I, could, I was trying to pay, place the voice that he was trying to do, and the the frog guy was basically a Paul Lynn guy. Paul Lynn was a was an actor in the United States in the 60s, 70s, 80s type, and he uh, had that sing songy voice, and that this this frog like captured that that and and um and also the I like the fact that the Klein is like connected to another another story arc through Shulk and like that was interesting and um, I really um, and I love that I love the Santarans I agree with you fellas about the Santarans like it was cool to see to, to hear them mm. recreated in, in, a, in a more uh, you know fierce manner and so like yeah. that was really cool yeah, good stuff. And I'd probably agree with that. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed Dan Stark here as Commander Star. Uh, or was it Marshall Star? Um, Marshall. Yeah, Marshall, yeah. I always get the ranks mixed up. It was really good to hear the Saltarans at their militaristic best again here for, back in the day. Um, you, you, again, you had the, the box standard formula. Everybody gets split up and they have their own particular piece of the puzzle that they're going to solve or be involved in before the story comes full circle in Chapter 4. Uh, good stuff there. McCoy. Like Tim Odie, he's, he's barely in the first two parts. He's basically talking via, you know, a, a cellular mobile phone device for a couple of lines here and there. Um, pure, pure setup for the, the following two parts, which well, Odie to, uh, really drove the story forward and kept it on once he got to chapter three. Um, interesting concept, the first two parts, so bring them all together to, to basically start a bidding war. Then you, in, you inadvertently start a war. Uh, in space with the, the Sultaran fleet and the uh, the crop walk. Crunch. So, yeah, so uh, that was interesting. The 620 fleet well, they're, they're, they're that's the species. Ah, like sorry, the Krill Rollins, yeah, there we go. Thank you, Big Finish, another fucking alien I can't fucking pronounce. Bastards. Uh, so, yeah, interesting stuff. And Aerosmith, uh, is really developing in the field, as uh, Dr. Klein would say. So uh, he's showing an initiative, and his character is developing as it, the story goes along. So we'll see what happens in part three with regards to young Will. And with that, guys, open Norway as no. It's any particular parts or circumstances that stood out for you within this tale. Uh, well, anything stand out, mate? Well, uh, well, well, from the beginning, you could tell the how people had to pay for to appear there yep. to, to to bid and all that. So you gotta give yeah, yeah, so you gotta yeah. give you gotta give Gurundu credit for coming up with that concept. Mm. I mean he was he was making money out the yin yang and then <laughs> some of the stuff that he was selling was not was worthless. Because he was saying oh we well, he's just fake. He only works maybe one time, that's it. You know, especially the the the, the weapon that the doctor was looking for there. I only works one time it's a piece of God. He's got the dodgy used car salesman, isn't he, man? He's just, he's like, yeah. He came up with some funny. He came up. He, he's a real crook, man. You got to give props for that. Mm. Um, you got to give Klein credit because um, she, you know, didn't you could say uh, her being in outer space and seeing other species and all that, and then um, to, you know, for her to find that weapon, you got you got to give her props for that because you know, mm. at one time, you know, she almost could have got killed herself like that. 
And of course, you know, she got she was a hostage from some Tarans. So you, she stood out pretty good like that. Well, like you say, he's he's grown as a character. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe something might have happened with him and Zip, but that's not gonna happen. So that's that's not so forget about that. So, but whether he will learn about what happened to her in the next story, we find out about that. I don't. I, that I, I, that's a little question. I don't understand that. Why didn't he tell him what happened to her? Because you know, if he you know he has to look. You know, that's growing pains. He got to deal with the good and the bad at the same time. Just don't try to hide. Quite it. done. That wasn't a doctor, to be fair. No, no, normally that would be the st- that, that would be the type of stunt McCoy's doctor would pull. Was the, the roles were reversed here, so hey, you got to give props to the Santarans. I love the way they took one of the Kralorians and used his own tentacles to choke him to death. <laughs> that was that oh, was cool. yeah, <laughs> brilliant. That, that was brilliant. I love it. Like you hear the guy choke. Ah, that was great. <laughs> that was a great sound effect. Yeah, meanwhile, Toad Boy going, "You're going to re- recompense me for every penny I've lost." Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, go for and it. You, yeah. And then you got you got to give Klein as she knows. How much a manipulator the doctor is because she she know knew that her DNA helps with weapon like that and then uh, how much of a manipulator the chess player that he is that she she realized. Oh yeah, you, 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 you'd Marshall start dropping hands left, right, and center. It took her a while before the pen had dropped. You're like, yeah, but Hello, like, ding, ding realized, dong. Yeah, ding dong. She realized it. So let's see how the third part how she's gonna react to that next story. So that's yeah. up pretty good. Come okay, on, <clears throat> Sue, that's time for you. Yeah, the the persuasion machine uh, gambit sort of thing. Yep. The pers- the persuasion machine, mm-hmm. and uh, like how it wasn't functional, but they were still selling it, and that was like the big ticket item. and And I love the the debate about that, and I love I love how it was set up. And I, that was a that would have been a really cool. It was sort of like the blame thrower in in Mystery Men. It was one of those things that would have like it would have been really cool, sort of non lethal thing. It was fun. And um and the other thing I really like I, I really like uh Aerosmith about how he's he's um he's 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 got the, the, the chops, he's got the 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 abilities to to survive in, in adverse situations and stuff like that. He's great. And um, yeah, and uh, I guess the killing of that girl was real. Uh, real, the blue girl was really um, kind of, you know, shocking. But you know, it was a battlefield. So yeah, what, what yeah, you- I, I, I go. Yeah, I'm really pissed off about that myself. Green toad kills blue girl. What the fuck, man? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, that's the symbolism there. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you racist. Uh, good stuff. Anyone else said to Gavin? No, that was really it. Okay, cool. AJ, you're up, mate. What do you reckon? Um, just on Sue's point, the persuasion machine, actually, I wouldn't say it's non-lethal, because if you got it to work, you could persuade an entire army to walk off a mountain. So, yeah, well, really. There you go. Um, anyway, my, my favorite point was two points about the uh, Sontarans. The first one is at the beginning, where the Sontarans go, we're just going there to browse. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> and also how Garen tells oh, you would look good in a pair of heels to the Sontarans. Because <laughs> well, it's there you go. a pair of heels. <laughs> um, yeah. Just um, the way how, how Ziv was sort of up and down, like how she was going to be doing this for her uh, her mum or her auntie or whatever it was. And then... Mm. She's doing it for herself, and then it's back to her own again. She can't keep her story straight, it seems. Um, and the one thing that really pissed me off, Will blabbed completely and utterly about the TARDIS to Ziv. And, Not that the Marshals uh, did, no. I mean, you know. No, I know. I understand that. But was, like, there was no repercussions for it. Remember what happened to Adam in season one of Doctor Who? Oh, let's, no, let's not forget what happened to Adam in general, well, prick. Yeah, uh, but, but that's what I mean. You know, if anyone blabbed about the TARDIS like that quite freely, wouldn't the doctor say, see ya, and just drop him out on the next mm, stop? I guess so. So, yeah. Yeah. Tembo, what do you reckon, man? Anything pick your interest here? Well, I kind of disagree with your point about uh, Klein and Seven. I think, actually, it's more like the Seventh Doctor to not tell somebody just because he kind of keeps his friends or companions on a need to know basis most of the time more often than, than telling them oh, something so oh you mean about the, the, the death yeah and I, I don't think he probably sees will as a companion as yet because he's just a tag along from the previous story who happened yeah. to be behind when they took off so i mean okay what i'm just going by by what we know so far i mean mm-hmm. uh so but on the other hand 
um, I, I think um, it, it was kind of funny that, that they'll just throw in a reference. Like the doctor says, well, go past, but don't open that box that says Wotan. So, I mean, it's just like, oh, by the way, there's a, there's a reference for you people that catch it, that kind of thing. I thought that was mm. kind of funny in the last episode. But I, th- I, th- I thought Will was a bit wet in this one compared to his first outing. So, I don't okay. know. I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, if he improves. I don't know. Are they continuing with this, this trio past this set? No idea. Okay. We'll find out, I guess. No idea. I, I know Tracy Taylor's is back this year, but I'm, 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 it's just hard with those yet. So. As for the blue girl, I think... To, to AJ's point, that's that's that was how her character was though. She was always lying, so I mean, you, she wasn't going to keep her story straight. And, and at the end, I mean, it was it was a bit sad because she ended up being kind of likable. But I think that mm-hmm. was where you finally realized how evil this Mister Toad was because I think that that he he came across as being a bit ham villain, you know, for the most part of the story. And when he finally does something right in your face like that, you're like, oh. It, it, so he, of course. A few scenes later, he gets his hand cut off, which he had coming. So. Oh, brilliant! I love that. Yeah. 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 I love when Saltara is choking him, and he's just we're all out of those, you know. But, but uh, I like the yeah. twist too that the Santarans actually rescued Klein from that that beastie at in the at the end of the first episode. I mean, the, you know, the cliffhanger. I mean, because it was against the code. <laughs> It was against it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, it's been it's been alluded to that the the, the militaristic. Uh, you know, characteristics of the Sultarans are well documented here. Um, the twist at the end, oh, okay, poor Marshall Stars gets done in by the Daleks, so we know where this is going. That story's obviously a Dalek story. And that Briggs gets the screaming ball into a fucking microphone again for two and a half hours. But um, no, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I mean, me and myself, like a lot of people, we're just a Dalek fatigue at this point, so we'll, 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 maybe a decent story. We'll, uh, we'll check it next week. But, but with regards to this tale, um, yeah, Garandal, Mr. Toad, as, as Tim calls him, he, he was decent enough. As I say, this, this fucking Toad has new at Mare Outland in Frobisher because he shows up in Jenny's box set that was released earlier this year. So, uh, yeah. You can bring back the Trog, but you can't even bring back the Penguin? What the fuck? You're racist, big finish. Sort yourself. Have a look at yourself. Um, I, I, I vote for more Frobisher, too. Hmm. Maybe it's a licensing thing. I don't know, but you've already done two. Come on. Sort that out. Anyway, with that, open mic portion of the cast, guys. Uh, anything else you want to bring up before we get this rated and in the can and we can just fill up some more? Well, you're ten, you're, um, you're, to your point about the, the, the next story being a Dalek story, at least it was underplayed. All you heard was the Dalek control room. You didn't really hear any Daleks yeah, talking, true. right? Yeah. So I think that was kind of a cool way to do it without being over the over the toppers, or, or maybe those of us that have Dalek fatigue, oh, I'll just skip that one. Mm. Well, we'll see. Twenty ones, you're going to have to listen to see how good, bad, and different it will be, as with any story, TV or audio. Oh, I like that how the, the doctor is searching for that Nazi soldier, and it turns out it ain't him. He's back where the story started from the last story. He's still on Earth. Hey, he's a gotta, burger. Yeah. <coughs> yes, and you got to go back where you started for to look for him again. So that'll be interesting to listen to that story when we do that one. Wow. Well, you know, where they move it up with that box, you know. They want the struggle painter coming back. Everyone else, guys. Um, the sound design this uh, story was very, very well done. When there was um, Klein was trying to get through to the doctor on the phone, mm. you had that feedback that you get sometimes when you got a mobile next to a speaker. You know when it's searching for network. Yep. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a brilliant touch because it, it gives that little bit more realism. Like, God damn it, work already. <laughs> Two bars. Yeah. High praise to the sign designer indeed on this one. And else, guys. Seven was uh, properly ma- malevolent and, and uh, manipulative again. And he always put mm-hmm. up a spot. You know. mm-hmm. Right, well, if we are r- abundantly refreshed, um, it's that time again. Um, FYI, if you are a couple and don't like eating or fucking together, then you don't need to be together. This health broadcast was brought to you by the NYC Medical Department. Thank you, Will. Save yourself some money and go Dutch, folks. Uh, 
Starway and Robbery, Sylvester McCoy, Tracy Cowles, and Christian Edwards. Susan, what do you get us at 10, Dirty? I will begin the bidding at 8 uh, Grendels out of 10. Okay, Grendel will love you. Yep. AJ, what's the number from down under? I'm going to give the stories a 9 out of 10. Uh, it was a good story. Sound design was brilliant and just, it was very meaty. Very meaty, indeed. <clears throat> well, it's a number five by scene, Matt. Um, even though the first two was pretty slow and not the light, I'm still going to give it an 8 out of 10, and I'm looking forward to listening to the next part. Very good, Matt. Excellent. And down in Tacky Hall, Timbo, what do you reckon, Matt? Uh, I'm giving it an 8 and a half. I thought it could have been um, – it's, it's a bit busy, though. I mean, it's got a whole lot going on everywhere mm -hmm. in the story, and I think it might have been tightened up and maybe a little more doctrine. I don't know. But I think um, overall it wasn't bad at all, and it works, it works good as a, as a middle uh, to a trilogy, I guess. So, yeah, okay. Excellent. Go. Excellent, mate, and I will concur with that. This does work as a good middle piece to a trilogy, and with that I will give it an 8 out of 10. The frog was Cap, the frog was Hammy. Yeah. He was even moustache twirly up until at the last part to a certain degree. But um Yeah, it's a bad yeah. croak. He did that croak. That's the bad thing. And he really did sound like Paul Lynn. And his hand will grow back. <laughs> and his hand will grow back. Well they got a regeneration part of you didn't know. So uh, Yeah, his hand will grow back within a month. Go cool figure. And with that guys, you have a ten for me and we are done for the evening. It just leaves us to divulge what we'll be tackling next week. There's a ton of Palm again, and Ruth, Bla Bra Bra Ruth Bradley are back in the second story of season one of Dark Eyes. And we have those pesky pepper pots in action once again. And well, the story is called Fugitives. The Fugitives, yep. Yeah. Um, after the events of escaping the chateau in France, we'll see what the Daleks have in store for the Doctor. Molly and the Tardy Box. So, look forward to tackling that. Please check out our buddies in the wonderful Wackety World of the YouTube guys. You've got the guys and dogs that each assembled with a TV movie on audio head reviews. Dr. Freedom is news broadcast. Amiga filled as well the adventures of Dr. Freedom and Eric. You've got the usual suspects, another Ron Wayne, Sammy Carter, Tony Blues, Mike Shannon, like, share, comment, subscribe. Thumbs up, thumbs down. We're getting the hell on out of here. Um, I've got a few things to watch. I'm still behind on Iron Fist. Whatever you're watching tonight, folks. Enjoy. Be excellent to yourself, folks, and each other, and we'll see you next week. All the best, folks. Go Patriots. Fuck them. <laughs>